previously. Three-eyed rascal, man. He gets under <laughs> the level four restriction Hell of gravity. Yeah, body, so it's go. not gonna do anything. I, I, I don't think I can double back on this strat, bro. This thing sucks. <laughs> this thing I mean, you so already bad. did double back on it. I don't think you can triple back on this strat. Yeah. Oh, you are so fucked, gay. <laughs> You need all the help you can get, bro, honestly. In this series, both Nim Nim and myself will be opening 24 booster packs or one box of a core Yu-Gi-Oh! booster set. We will build a deck and play a best two out of three, and the winner will receive a small prize to upgrade their deck. However, in each episode, we will open another box of the next set that was released moving in chronological order, constantly upgrading our decks before dueling each other at the end of each episode. But this time around, we'll be introducing side sets, a new banning system, and plenty of other fun surprises that you'll just have to watch to find out. This is the Yu-Gi-Oh! Progression Series Season 2. If you want 5% off any singles or sealed product, click the affiliate links in the description and use code SEMO5. And clicking the TCG Player affiliate link before you shop helps support us to provide you with more amazing content. I don't know what Gage has been thinking these past couple episodes, but he has definitely been clowning around with this attempt to bring back clown control just because it did so well for him in the beginning of the series. But it's a whole different ball game now, buddy. There is spell and trap removal galore. That shit is not gonna fly. So we are back in the winner's circle and we actually have a banning since I spun a ban ticket on last episode's wheel. So a couple cards up for contention here. The cards that I'm thinking about banning are most likely Dark Hole, Change of Heart, or Yada Garasu. I think those are the three largest threats, and I also don't want to ban a card that I also have access to because then I won't get to use it. And those are the three biggest threats that I think Gage has that I don't. And Yada Garasu is a card that I feel like is going to fade into obscurity the further we get into the progression series, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that off of this discussion. But between Dark Hole and Change of Heart, there's actually something interesting. So looking over here at the screen, on the Yu-Gi-Oh! database, the next shot I'm going to get to pull Dark Hole is actually either, well, technically I could get it in like the turbo packs if I'm losing because then I actually get three shots at it here. But the next core set where I will guaranteed have a shot at it is Gold Series Haunted Mine, which is still a ways away, but in all fairness, still isn't that bad, right? I mean, that's a chance to at least have it. And Dark Hole is also a card that by modern Yu-Gi-Oh standards is also at three. So it's not the worst. Change of Heart, alternatively, only has a few printings and the next shot at Change of Heart, because we missed it in Dark Beginning 1, is actually Battle Pack Epic Dawn, which I guess, to be fair, is around the same time we get access to Dark Hole, right? Because it's also 2012. But, I mean, we still have shots at Dark Hole here in the Turbo Packs too, right? And Change of Heart is still banned on the actual ban list, and Dark Hole isn't. I think I'm going to take out Change of Heart. This card is a bit scary. We have uh, outs to Dark Hole as well, because we have My Body as a Shield and such. And so, we have counters to the card. I think it's fine to let Gage have a Dark Hole, but Change of Heart is a disaster. I don't want to deal with this card anymore. I feel like the further we get into the series, this card's going to get worse and worse. And it's a card that Gage is never really going to take out of his deck unless we force his hand. So we're banning Change of Heart. It's gone. Now let's go ahead and get into today's episode. And that starts with us spinning the wheel. It just gets better and better. We won last episode. We got to ban something and we get to spin the wheel. God, the wheel is so OP. But let's see what we get here. Come on. I really want to see another banning. Another unbanning would be nice as well. Or if we get like a Starlight Rare Wild card or something. <gasps> stop, 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 stop. <gasps> oh my God. This has never happened before. This is interesting. Okay, all right. Well, we're gonna go ahead and leave this for now and leave you guys in suspense. Let's go ahead and throw it on over to Gage so we can tell you all about today's set, Dark Revelation 1. Back at it again. I'm the one looking like a clown these last two weeks playing that stupid clown control deck, man. We gotta go back to what we know. But today we have a very exciting episode because we're opening the second reprint set for the Yu-Gi-Oh! Progression series. DR1 was released March 19th, 2005, and this contains cards 
cards from Dark Crisis all the way to Ferronic Guardian. So it's obviously a little bit weaker than that of what we had from LOB to like what Magic Ruler, Pharaoh Servant, all those sets in between there. This is obviously a little bit of a step back, but still having a second shot at getting a whole bunch of cards that we didn't originally is really cool. Alex has the luxury of having a redo or ticket. I do not. Whatever I get from my 24 packs that I opened today is what's going to be putting in my collection. The database changed the way they organize things and they don't show the rarity of the cards in the sets for some reason. So we're going to have to go by this. This is broken off by rarity. So there's 30 different rares cards we can get. Um, big ones, including tribe infecting virus. We already have magical scientists, but we can't break it yet. A second stab at skill drain is never a bad thing as well. The supers, we got another shot at DD warrior lady and then spell shield type B, I think is not too bad. Also another copy of necro valley, a chance to get more of those. Not too shabby. You would think the ultra rares are the big ones, but the big ones are only lava golem as well as breaker, the magical warrior. Those are the only two big standouts from this set. Blast held by a tribute. I'm pretty sure isn't too bad either. And then the commons, we have another shot at all these grave keepers. Remember, I only have one spy, so it'd be nice to pick up a couple more of them. Another shot in metamorphosis, more reasoning copies, Raigeki breaks. And the one other thing that I was really excited about is Sukiyomi. I got another shot at her. I only have one of her in my collection right now, and she is still as relevant as ever. Definitely a lot smaller than the other set we opened before. 267 cards is not nearly as much, but hey, we have a chance to get what we need. I'm in the loser circle again, which means I got to open the pity pack again. Three more packs of tournament pack five. Didn't have too much luck last time we opened it. I did get a Jowgan, which was pretty bumping. Let's see what we get this time around. Nothing in number one. That's okay. Number two, another pyramid turtle. I'll take it. Put him in the bank there. Third one, that's a third Kaiku. You know what? That's actually not too terrible. We'll drop it in the collection. Feel pretty good. All right, a lot of powerful cards up for grabs in DR1. Probably not as good as Dark Beginning 1, in all honesty, but there is a chance for us to get some cards we missed out on in these previous sets. That also means there's a shot for Gage to get some of these cards as well, and that makes me a bit nervous. So 24 packs of DR1. Let's see what we're getting. Holy crap. Kaiser Coliseum rearing its ugly head once again. Not happy to see that. This first pack is a bit of a dud. Reaper on the Nightmare is a nice card for Metamorphosis and possibly Instant Fusion. I'm not sure if you can Instant Fusion into this or not, but it's a card that was super in front at Guardian and we didn't get it, but it's a card we can put in our extra deck. I think we only have one Gravekeeper's Guard, actually, so getting a second copy of this is pretty nice. The fact that Gage can get Spies is a bit scary. Okay, we're getting some Hollows, uh, Interdimensional Matter Transporter and Question, uh, both of which are probably not very good. I think our card pool has sort of surpassed both of these cards now, but the Hollows are coming. Yeah! Yes, a second Sakuretsu armor. We did it. We finally got more than one Saku. Oh my God. I'm so happy we did reprint set this season. This feels so good. We might get another one too. Oh my God. Oh, that's neat. I'm not sure how many apprentice magicians I ended up pulling out of Magician's Force, was it? But that's pretty good just as a little mini engine later on. Also, reasoning might be okay later. I think we may have a place at Vergeki break, but if not, that's our third. I don't get a reroll. Whatever I get is what I get. I cannot get upset. Let me see. Pack number one, another copy of Regeki Break. That is the third. And a Gaku Guy or Panda, if we want to visit Panda Burn again, he's very nice to have. Got a super rare, Coffin Seller. That is really, really bad, actually. Coffin Seller's not good. Oh, an ultra rare. I had to dig through here. I have to see what everything is here. We got the uh, Type 8 Spell Shield, which isn't too bad. And then we got a Lava Golem to add to the collection. I know Alex already has two of these bad boys, I think. Uh, it's not going to be something that I don't think becomes relevant until later on, unless I want to tackle a burn strategy. But I think we're a little bit too early on to consider something with that. There are some nice ones coming in there. Another ultra rare with the uh, interdimensional matter transporter. Not too any uh, anything good, but the Necro Valley is pretty hot there. I'll definitely take that as well as a second copy of Gravekeeper's Guard. Super rare question. My question is, where's all the really good fucking pulls, bro? New Doria is actually something pretty cool in the rare slot. I didn't get a New Doria in any of my openings beforehand. I forget where this card was even initially released, like Pharaonic Guardian, I think. Didn't get any copies of it. It would have been nice to pair with the Pyramid Turtles. But now that I've been getting them in the side packs here, it might be something to consider. You know, come to think of it, I don't remember if I didn't pull Magical Merchant, or if I only pulled like one of it, but in any case, seeing one of this is actually pretty nice. Another Archfiend Soldier for our little beatdown deck isn't terrible either, and Desk Koala even if we want to change things up and try to go for a bit of a burn strat, like aggro burn, I think we may have only gotten one of this before, because it was a rare before, and it's still a rare now. Okay, there's a Luster Dragon. That's a nice beater to get, but it's not dark or light. I think the Archfiend Soldier is just outclassed a little bit if we want to stick with that strat, but more importantly, we picked up another Spirit Reaper. I think we only pulled one of this card, so if this is our second, this card doesn't get limited for a while. We can actually take advantage of multiple Spirit Reapers, so that would be pretty good. Oh, we got a third Sakuretsu armor. Let's go. We have the playset now. That feels so good. Holy shit. I don't know how many Tsukiyomi I pulled either, and so I think I have at least 
one, so this gives us at least two of this card as well. It's interesting how these reprint sets just round out our pools so nicely. Ooh, that's actually sick. That's our third copy of Skill Drain. We pulled two of this in Dark Crisis, and this means that we now have a full play set if we want to go the Skill Drain beatdown route. I'm not sure if we have good enough monsters yet to fully commit to that strategy, but depending on like what Gage is playing, that could be a consideration. Worst Ultra Rare of the set, I'm willing to bet money on it. Another Metamorphosis, though. I think that's my second one. Card's already banned at this point, I think, so there's no really reason to collect multiple of them. Another super rare question. Nothing too relevant. I think that's a third Magical Merchant finally finding its way into the collection. Another Necro Valley. Oh, that's kind of hot, actually. Having more than one Necro Valley is really, really neat, and a Judgment of Anubis isn't too bad either. I'm pretty sure that's my third. But uh, having multiple copies of Necro Valley is very exciting because that gives me the opportunity to visit Gravekeepers as a strategy. I don't know if it's the way to go now. I'm still waiting for cards like Recruiter and Descendant down the line, but um, it could be something to consider. Uh, they do get pretty beefy. I haven't gotten more Spy, though, which is something I'd like to have. Another Ultra Rare, Skull Archfiend Lightning. He's not too crazy either. Kaiser Coliseum. That is a crazy card, though. Another super coffin seller in the last few packs here. I haven't gotten any spy. That was the one really like exciting thing I was looking for is more copies of common spy, but I haven't gotten them. So um, I don't consider this opening too fantastic. I don't have a choice. I got to keep what I get though. Skill drain is big though. I think that's my second copy of skill drain. Maybe my first. Did I get any originally? All right, last pack. Anything crazy? Something big in the close? Are you going to let me see it? Absolutely not. That's the second copy of Skull Archfiend Lightning. Got a lot of ultra rares. Got a lot of big stuff there. Uh, the super rare Necro Rallies are kind of clutch. Let me see if there's anything I can even do with this. I don't know if I'm going to change up what strategy I had in mind already. Let's take a look. All right, you guys. Only a few packs left of Dark Revelation 1. I got to be honest, not like an amazing opening, but we've actually gotten a lot of very useful cards. And most importantly, we now have a playset of Saku. That's a really big deal. So let's flip it up. See what we get here. Exodian Necros. Excellent. That's exactly what I wanted. I actually I think I only pulled one wave motion. I don't know if I'm ever going to play burn, but I guess it's good to have if I want to try that out. Second to last pack. Can we get a breaker, please? Doesn't look like it. Another Tsukiyomi, though, is nice in question, of course. Fantastic. Last pack. Can we get a breaker? Can we get a breaker, please? That didn't look like it. What else did we get in here? Elma? I don't think we're going to be able to do anything with that, but okay. I mean, this is about what I expected out of this set. Uh, some interesting cards, right? We have another skill drain, some Sakuretsu armors. We have a great Gravekeeper's Guard. We have just some cards that rounded out the rest of our pool, right? Not really too much to complain about. I think aside from Breaker, I wasn't looking for anything in particular, but the set is so large, it's so unlikely we're going to get something we really want. So I think I'm actually just going to lock this in. I don't think there's much reason to re-roll this. I think we can do better in later sets, but let's go ahead and get to building. We've got some work to do. Finding ourselves with something familiar in front of our faces here, we're back on the Yada Lock deck that we were on before. Literally one of the most anticlimactic openings yet. Dark Revelation 1 did not treat me well. I did not get anything good that would change literally anything about this deck. I think we're rocking with the same thing, just the inclusion of Phoenix Wing 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 Blast from the uh, Flaming Eternity episode prior. Uh, I think this deck has been the most well-rounded thing that we've had consistently throughout the series. Trying the Clown Control was just something to give me a little bit different, maybe give me an edge if Alex didn't expect it, and it didn't pan out. Cards like Giant Trunade and Dust Tornado that I knew were going to be mainstays in this deck now have just been able to topple over any Floodgate strategy that I've had, so I want to go back on what we know was doing well, and that is this Yada Lock strategy, we were able to pull it off, for Christ's sake. Maybe we can do it another time. Just looking at it, I feel like this is the most well-rounded deck that we have at our disposal, and I want to give it another shot before, you know, trying something else or completely, like, reworking our strategy. We're almost on a three-lose streak here. Don't want to give myself a bad name. I'm trying to stay in the winner's circle. Let's see what Alex has come up with, if he's changed anything up, or if he's still sticking with the tried and true. Okay, this is probably the worst idea I've ever had, but if we get to pull this off, Gage is never going to live this down. Introducing Ben K OTK. So if you've never seen this deck before, this deck centralizes around Armed Samurai Ben K. This card reads, for each equip card equipped to this card, it gains one additional attack during each battle phase. So what we're trying to do is stall the game out long enough that we can assemble Ben K plus a myriad of equips, including Acts of Despair, Big Bang Shot, United We Stand, Mage Power, etc. Buff this guy up and just kill Gage in one single turn. How are we going to do that? Well, Iron Blacksmith Kotetsu is a flip monster that allows us to get these equipped spells to our hand. We also have Magical Merchant, which can do a similar thing. It can get us any spell or trap, though, and we're going to need this card's help for sure. We also have ways to stall Gage out of the game that he's been using the last few episodes, Level Limit, Area B, and Gravity Bind. I was thinking I could just bring my old deck into today's episode, but I figured Gage is probably expecting me to do that, so I want to try to one-up him this time and play something completely off the wall that he's not going to expect, and I think this is definitely one of those decks. So, finishing off the rest of the deck, we have Chaos Emperor, 
temper in here because we are playing a bunch of lights and darks. And so this is like a secondary fallback win condition, if anything. Ben K is a dark, the merchants are light. So we have the synergy for it. Cyber Jar is in here to help us amass our combo pieces. This card's dangerous because Gage has a lot of powerful cards too. But if we're missing like one combo piece, we could flip a jar and maybe that gets us there. Warrior Lady and Exile Force are here for additional uh, utility in tandem with reinforcement of the army. We have the Kotetsus. The Mystic Tomatoes actually float into Ben K, which is nice. We can also go into a Sangin or a Spirit Reaper if we need to stall. The spells are two acts of despair. I think this is neat because we get to show off actually some of the cards from these side sets. Like Acts of Despair was originally an ultra in Magic Ruler, but I think it was like a common or a rare in Dark Beginning. And I had like four of this card. So I was able to actually do this thanks to the side sets. And so I want to experiment with some of the decks we weren't able to play with before because of the way the progression series was structured in season one. So Big Bang Shot's another one in here that allows us to pierce over Gage's defensive monsters if he has any, but it's just a way for us to get an additional damage and not waste a hit with Ben K. Cold Wave is sort of like a heavy storm or giant true nade to ensure that we just win the game automatically. Just not realizing Cold Wave doesn't exactly do what I want it to do in this deck because I was trying to use it as a substitute true nade because like in goat format, they could play three true nade and a heavy storm. And unfortunately I don't have access to that. So I actually think I need to swap this out because uh, if I Cold Wave, I can't equip all my stuff onto Ben K and that's pretty bad. So I think I'm just going to put the Confi in over this. If anything, Confi will rip a card out of his hand that could possibly stop our combo. So I guess we'll just do that. That's fine. Uh, but True Nade is like the main combo piece. So the nice thing about True Nade is that it gets rid of all of Gage's back row, but it also bounces level limit and gravity bind to our hand because Ben K is unfortunately a level four. I wish it was a level three. That'd make this way easier. And so we kind of need to draw True Nade. Alternatively, like we could go for like a dust tornado on our own level limit, I guess, which just seems terrible. Or if Gage just has like one back row, we could dust the back row. Let's say we don't have these up yet and just throw all our equips on and try to kill them that way. So we have multiple avenues to kill, but it's going to be uh, very dicey at best. We have Mage Power and United. We stand on the equip spell front as well. Remember, we didn't initially get these in LON like Gage did. We got these in Dark Beginning, actually. And so again, we're actually able to play this deck because we have all the equips, Potter Greed, Premature, Rota, and Smashing Ground for the spells. And then the traps call the hunted, double dust, double gravity bind, and Imperial Order, Ring of Destruction, Triple Threatening Roar, another card to allow us to live, and Torrential Tribute. And then when this deck inevitably fails, or if we win game one somehow, I'm just going to side out all of the cards for the Ben KOTK combo and go back to my other deck that was playing the Berserk Gorillas, the Chaos Sword, the Sasuke, the Two Shining Angel, the Skilled Dark Magician, Two Archfiend Soldier, Cold Wave, Double Fisher, and Triple My Body as a Shield. We can take out most of the combo pieces. I think we have to keep like United We Stand, Mage Power, and maybe like Cyber Jar in the deck, but these are fine. We're kind of playing a beatdown style of deck anyway, so some extra attack points isn't the worst. And Cyber Jar is a bit iffy, but again, I think we can make it work. It's only one card in the 40. How bad could it possibly be, right? So again, this is pretty gimmicky, but I just want to see if we can just do it one time. Just one time, if we can beat Gage with this, I would be happy. We'll see what happens. Ladies and gentlemen, let's not make you wait any longer. It's time to do it. <laughs> Alex, the second reprint set of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Progression series, not just of this season, of ever, dude. Isn't it exciting, man? I feel like it brings a whole new breath of fresh air into the series, just seeing these reprint sets, having another stab at like cards that we didn't get before. What do you think, though? Right, I think it definitely adds a different layer of how we have to think about, uh, you know, bands now, since we have that into the mix, and different decks that we can actually build as well. I was thinking about how, huh, I missed these cards in these other sets, and then it's like, oh, there's like my third card of that. Yeah, There's my right? second copy of that, right? I imagine you were doing a lot of that in your opening as well. <laughs> yep, I was able to get a lot of surprisingly, dude, commons and stuff like that. I'm like, right. wow, I really didn't get three of those the first time around. I know, it's crazy. And it's also scary too, because I think it makes our decks more powerful inherently as well, because stuff that we may have missed out on and maybe had a slight advantage over the other person in those sets, maybe now the playing field's a bit more even, but we'll just have to see. So I'm ready to get into it, buddy. Let's shout the patron it is Jonathan Nathanson. Thank you for the support okay oh, man all right you've all been right. on an rps kind of clobbering spree you still using that dice i'm just gonna I am check using it. the die actually i rolled a six and six right. for scissors so all right fair enough i'm gonna go second going second seemed to work pretty well the last few episodes uh, especially if you're on that same clown control deck so let's see what you're up to buddy all good right, luck. let's see how it goes bud good luck i'll go stand by main i will set one two and I will set the third card. It is a monster. I will just uh, pass it to you, bud. You have a monster. Okay. Interesting. Uh, I'll go ahead and draw. This card is significantly worse. 
in the current board state. So I don't know if I want to wait. Yeah, let's just fire it. I'll comp for you. Oh, ooh. I want to see what you're up to. <laughs> All right, I mean, you're going to get a little peek here. Go ahead and take your pick. Holy shit balls. Okay. Well, you would think CED is the immediate snap here, but Zaborg is also quite scary. He's you don't nice. have CED yet. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, so because you can just like, if you have a flip effect, you could flip it, do something, then sack for Zaborg, possibly pop whatever I'm up to over here. But CED is also terrifying at the same time. All right, Gage, you know what? I'm a gambling man. I'm going to hit Zaborg. <laughs> I mean, at least you know I have the CED in hand, so you can play around it properly. But yeah, uh, for all the good that'll do. We'll see. Uh, I like your style, so I think I'm going to do something similar. I'm just going to T set and pass. Play right into your blasting fuse. Go Sounds ahead. like a plan to me. I'll go draw, standby phase, main phase. Sure. I'm going to flip up the merchant, okay? Okay. Thank God there's no dark yet. Oh, that's a really good merch. I'll definitely take... Tell you what, Alex, I won't even add to hand. I'll just activate it. If you can okay. fire it. That's fine. No, you can cool. fire it. So Damn, take... I should have saved that confiscation. <laughs> what was I doing? <laughs> I'll gladly take two more cards off the top of my deck. Um, Let's see what's next. So it's a set card. It could be anything, actually. Literally anything. Mm -hmm. um, tell you what, I kind of just want to get a look. I'll play it a little slow. I'm going to activate swords. Let me get a peek. Interesting. It's going to flip my Iron Blacksmith Kotetsu. Oh. <laughs> All right, yeah, you can. Uh, does the flip effect activate? It, yeah, does it does activate. I don't okay. know why everyone thinks that doesn't activate. The flip effects 100% activate when you sword. So uh, with that, then I have a decision here. I am going to grab a copy of Mage Power. That okay, that's a okay with me. With swords up, not gonna matter too much. I will just set another card. Best case scenario is like you have another Sukiyomi, which you did have a chance to get another copy of in this set. Mm -hmm. So I will, I will commit. I will go into my Kaiku. Sure. And then I'll go battle phase and I'll poke over your guy. I will activate Gravity Bind. Why are you on this shit now, man? Come <laughs> on, dude. No. I thought we were past yeah, this. You were having so fun the last two episodes playing this garbage. I thought I would give it a shot. Ah, it's kind of fucking lame. Um, but it is fine. I'll allow it. Go ahead, your turn. Okay. Uh, this is gonna be a fun game we're gonna have here. I'm gonna draw. Uh, I'll just set one and okay. we'll just go to turn one on swords. Go ahead. Okay, no problem. Turn one. I will draw. Uh, I'll just throw the merchant into defense. And uh, I'll pass. Guess we're just chilling. I'll draw. Stand by main. I've got another back row. Turn two on swords. All right. Thrilling gameplay. We I got know, right? On. Super intense right now. Um, <laughs> I'll just draw, set, and pass it over to you, bud. Okay. Uh, you know what? I like your style so much. I think I'm going to do the same. Swords is expired. <laughs> All right. Goodbye, swords. Okay, cool. Putting a lot of work. I'll draw. Stand by main. Sure. Fucking gravity bind, really? Um... <laughs> It's not so fun when it's on the other side of the table, no, is it? No, it really isn't. Um, I will just set a card and uh, I'll pass. Go ahead. This is going well. This is going well. Okay, I'll draw. I will set and I will pass. Okay, I'll draw. Stand by me. I'll just pass. Go ahead. Okay, draw. I will flip Magical Merchant. Yeah, you can merch. Okay, T-Roar. Okay, yeah. T-Roar. Uh, I don't know if that's exactly what I wanted, but I'll take it, I guess. Can't attack me with Kaiku. I suppose I will throw it to you. Not much of a rush. Okay. Um, during the end phase, I'm going to play around this dust shoot because that would ruin my life. So I'm going to activate the wing blast. I okay. will pitch a Sakuretsu armor for cost here. And I just got to decide what I want to stack. Um, I don't mind giving you the gravity bind back. You can put that back on top of your deck. It's going. Okay, cool. I'll draw. Put myself to three. Stand by me. Wing Blast is in the graveyard. So. Oh, that's right. Excuse me. Okay. I'll just enter my battle phase. Uh, Got something? Do I have something? No, this is fine. Okay. I will Kaiku into the Merchant. So this is what, 16? Sure. Cool. I'll go main two. I will set a card and uh, your go. Okay. Could be drawing literally anything off the top here. Go main one. I'll set a back row and I'll throw it to you. Okay. I'll draw. Stand by me. Uh, I will set a card, and, uh, I guess I'll just pass it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even want to try yeah, and attack, nah, buddy? Nah, nah, I kind of have a feeling what's back there, so. <laughs> Fair point, fair point. All right, I'll head into main one, and, I mean, it's just same old, same old. I don't think there's really much of a rush. I'll just set another one, throw it to you. Jesus, is exhausting. Okay. <laughs> I will draw. Standby phase, main phase. At some point, something's gonna give here. Yeah, right? Something's <laughs> gonna happen. It should be very soon, I hope. Uh, I am going to summon DD Warrior Lady. Yikes. I think this is too juicy not to try. I'm gonna Torrential. I'm actually 100% okay with Torrential, Alex. That's fine. 
Figured as much. Okay. Cool. So everything can get dumped. Okay. I'll just pass it over to you then, Alex. Go ahead. Okay. We'll draw. Uh, not the card I wanted, but it's not terrible either. I'll set one and I'll just throw it back. Okay. I will draw. Stand my face, main face. All right. Uh, I'll activate premature burial. I'll pay the eight and I'm going to target DD Warrior Lady. Supreme Warrior Lady, huh? I'm okay with that. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, I'll summon her. Sure. Time to go battle phase. Sure. Declare. No, we got. I don't know why she's moving like that, but. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so level four can't attack. That's fine. I'm okay with this. Okay, so I will. I'll actually chain Dust Tornado and I'll target the Gravity Bind. Dust the Gravity Bind. Uh, That's fine. Okay, cool. So, so attack goes through. It Rather is Phoenix. Kotetsu once again. That's fine. You can get your search, and I will keep the Warrior Lady. I imagine you would like to keep the Warrior Lady. I'll grab myself this time a copy of United We Stand. That's A-OK. -okay. I will go main two. I will set a card, and I'll set another one, and I'll just pass it. Okay, we'll draw. I'm going to go ahead and smash the Warrior Lady. I will chain my Imperial Order. Off the top I-O. Gross. Uh, sure. It's fine. Neat. Okay, so pre-mat is uh, just kind of sticking on the board there. No longer attached yep. to Warrior Lady. Then I will set a card, and I'll set another card, and we'll throw it to you. Okay, no problem. I will draw. Standby phase. You gonna I will, pay for the order, buddy? I will keep the eye on. I'm going to keep that thing around here. Okay. I'll go to my main phase one. Interesting game we have going on here. Yeah, so it's pretty back and forth, I'd say. Um, All right, I'm going to flip up the Witch of the Black Forest. Eventually. All right, now that Witch is up, let's go battle phase. You got anything? Sure. I do. I have a Threatening Roar. All-star from season one, baby. Love to see him. All right. This card was pretty good. We're going to try to put in some work in the early years here. All right, so no declaration because uh, I can't. I will go main phase two, and I'll just uh, I'll pass it to you, bud. Go ahead. All right, sure. Uh, I'll go ahead and draw. I'm going to flip my Mystic Tomato. Okay. Battle, let's try to kill the Witch. I will activate my Ring of Destruction on your Mystic Tomato. We'll both take 14. Ooh. That's okay. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so we both take 14. Sure. Okay. Tomato dies. Unfortunate, but had to happen. Uh, that forces me into second main here, and now I've got to think. Uh, well, I don't think I have much of a choice, so I guess we'll go for it. I'll banish a light and a dark. Okay. CED. Bottom. Figured you had something. My sure. body does nothing against Imperial Orders. <laughs> it does not. All right. Well, we are slowly trying our best, I suppose. Uh, I will set one. And thinking if there's anything else I want to do, don't think so. So I will just throw it over to you. All right. No sweat. Draw. All right. Uh, I'll head to my standby phase and I will opt to keep the Imperial Order. It feels so powerful saying that, man. Right. <laughs> right. I will go main phase one. Sure. And uh, I'll just take it straight to the battle phase. I've got another threatening roll. <laughs> okay, all right, it's fine. I'll go main phase two. I'll set a card and I'll throw my witch into defense. Sure. And uh, screw it, we'll throw the warrior lady there too. <laughs> just walling up. <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, your move, Alex, go ahead. Okay, we'll draw for all the good it'll do. Main one, I'll set a card, <laughs> go ahead. Yep, I'll draw. My plan is just to let your IO kill you at this point. <laughs> It'll get there eventually. I will go standby phase and uh, I will pay off the IO. Okay. okay. I'll go into main phase one. Sure. I'll banish a light and a dark. I mean, I knew you had this. Well, you didn't know I had this fella here. Oh, so. I did not know you had that fella. Okay. Yeah, sure. That's fine. So I'll go attack, do attack, and I'll go battle phase. Would you believe I have the third I, I, Honestly, I'd believe it, man. That's fine. I'll go main two, and uh, I will just... Uh, <laughs> uh, go ahead, your move. Okay, please. Fuck! Oh, my God. I, that's not bad, actually, in all fairness. It's kind of funny. Okay, uh, main phase one. All right, I mean, I guess I got to try, right? I will activate level limit area B and pass the turn. Does it do anything under IO? It does not do anything currently under IO. Awesome. Okay, cool. So I will... Uh, <laughs> I will... I'm so, I know what you have now, too. You got fucking dust tornado or something like that. I'll draw. You gonna I'll, pay for the IO, buddy? <laughs> I will pay for the IO. Okay, sure. sure. Okay, now the main phase. Yep. I will go straight to battle. I'll declare with switch. On declaration, I will activate dust tornado on Imperial Order. I thought so. That's, um, that's gonna be fine, okay? They all go to defense. <laughs> yes, they do. Yes, they do. 
Defense, defense, defense. Okay. I will go main phase two. Sure. And uh, I will set a card. And okay. it's, um... <laughs> <laughs> It never gets any easier. Um, it's your move. Go ahead. Okay, I'll draw. Main one. Mm -hmm. Fuck. Oh my god. Damn it. Why couldn't I get this one turn sooner? Okay. Well, go big or go home, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I will activate Dust Tornado targeting level limit area B. <laughs> yeah, okay. Wait, no, you can't. It's uh it's only opponents that you can target with Dust oh, Tornado. Oh, it's opponents. This was never happening anyway. <laughs> Alright. Alright, um, well in that case, what can I do with this? Wow, this is even more embarrassing now that I didn't know that. Wow, this card sucks compared to MST. I know, right? Uh, it's definitely gets under IO though, so I mean I guess it gets under IO. That is true. Just, just go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll draw for turn. Just go. Standby just go. phase, main phase, anything. Yeah, just put me out of my misery, please. Yeah, yeah, I'll do it. I'll banish a light in the dark. Um, I finally feel like he's safe enough to put down. Yeah. CD, anything? Yeah, I... <laughs> Okay, I'm just gonna show you this because I thought the dream could have come true. I had finally I drew Ben K and had four equips in my hand. Yo! I was just gonna fucking one shot you into oblivion. Yeah, it's so oh, interesting to have your level limit up though. God, no yeah. Screen. If I would have drawn this instead of level limit, I could have dusted your I O. And assuming if this wasn't anything real, I could have just won. But oh man, what All is right. this? Well, I guess you don't want to show me that one, is? I well, I mean, it doesn't matter at we'll all. See. all right. <laughs> I'll take the game matter. one. What a I'm so mad. <laughs> oh my god. Reading cards. Imagine reading cards, Gage. I'm so upset. I'm gonna get roasted in the comments. If there if there's gonna be someone who's gonna make a patron name out of this one, oh my god. I was so close. I was so fucking You tried close. to get the one up on me with the dust tornado. I've uh, been through season one, Alex. I know the ropes. You can't dust your own cards. Fair. I think I was there with uh with insectors, I think that's what I was trying to do. I was trying to dust my own cards and I couldn't. So I had to learn the hard way, bud. You know, in all fairness, I did not have dust in season one either, I don't think. So I guess that was my lesson. And I guess I don't play enough old formats to remember this. I'm going to go second, and uh, we're going to see how this goes, buddy. Good All luck. right, but good luck. You will need it. I will go standby main. Sure. That's so bad. I'm just going to throw down Kaiku the Ghost Destroyer. Okay. And I will set one, two. Your move, Alex. Okay. Draw. Interesting. Uh, smash Kaiku. Yep. Okay. Got that far. <laughs> um, now what the hell do we do? What did I see in the other game? I saw all the good traps, basically. IO, I saw ring. Yeah, just keep it simple. Let's run out of Shining Angel. Yep. Try to hit for 14. 14's okay by me. Okay. Second main, I've got two Baccaronis, and I'll throw it to you. All right, I'll drop. Stand by main. I'll just set a third, and I'll pass to you. Okay. Draw. I guess keep on the pressure. Let's bring out Spirit Reaper. Oh, oh God, that's actually really good. Okay. Try to hit for three. Three's gonna be fine. You do get the rip. Ooh, I get the hit. All right, let's hit this one. Okay, it's a uh, it's sorcerer. Okay, it's a dark. Thankfully, fourteen. I'll take fourteen. Okay, got a third back row into the Imperm column. Go ahead. I'll draw. Stand by main. I will just set a card and I'll pass it to you. Okay. Trying, uh, Warrior Lady. Yeah. Hit with Warrior Lady. It's Merchant. Okay. So I'll get my merch. Well, Switch. no. Switch. There goes that. Yeah, Space. Okay. okay. Uh, I would no. Do I want to banish here? This puts a light in grave. Uh, well, if you do have CED, I have a 50 50 shot of hitting it. If you don't have CED, then do I care? It's actually a tough call. You're going to draw a card next turn. Nah, I'll play the odds. You don't have it. Okay, cool. All right. Go to grave. Three. And then I'll take, I'll take the 17 total. You get the rest. Okay. Let it rip. Hit this one. This has not been good to me. Ah, uh, there goes my Yada. <laughs> Ooh, okay, so MST is the last card. I'll pass. Go ahead. Drop. Stand by main. I will pot agreed. IO. Would you like to MST? <laughs> yes, I would like to MST. <laughs> I'm just going to force you to use it, I guess. Yep, sure. Yep. All right. If there's any way to keep me alive. Pot of Greed will help you do it. That's an anime moment and a half right there. I, I know it would, be, it would be even better if I drew something where I was actually <laughs> feel like I had a chance. <laughs> um. All right, I will just, uh, I'll set a card and uh, I'll have my turn. Go ahead. Okay, at the start of your main phase one, Cold Wave. Wow, I guess I'll chain Wing Blast, huh? And uh, I'll stack <sighs> your, uh, the Shining Angel. Sure, so Angel on top. Okay, you're good. Wave resolves battle. Uh, let's see here. So you get an extra draw. It's a 
two turn clock regardless here. I'm trying to think if there's any reason. Okay, I'm gonna hit with Warrior Lady no matter what. Yep. Um, I'm debating on Reaper. There's an argument to not hit with it. Just debating if it matters. If I hit with Reaper, you go down to 14. Shining Angel hits you exact. What am I afraid of? You're under Cold Wave. Warrior Lady deals with any... Fuck it, I'll just hit you. Yeah, whatever. All right. I'm way overthinking this. Go ahead. I Draw think you are too, man. Card it actually was pathetic. That was completely worthless. Woo! So <laughs> game, game three! Wow, let's that one go. did not go my way, dude. What a speedy game, too. Alex, I can confidently say that game two did not go at all as was planned. Right? <laughs> well, you know what, buddy? The game one didn't go my way at all. So all right, so I think it's we're only even fair. now. So uh, that means this game three should be epic. It should be a climactic moment of the progression series. One to remember. And I think I will, if I remember correctly, going second seems to be the wave. So I'm going to choose that. All right. We'll see if it pays off for you, bud. Best Good luck, to luck. Us. Good luck. I, I haven't gone first in a minute here. This is kind of scary. All right. What are we going to do in main one here? All right. Uh, I guess let's get to it. I will normal berserk gorilla and I will set two cards and throw it to you. Hey, man. No problem. I will draw. Stand by, Thieves. You got anything? Nope. No dust shoot. I'll take it. I'll draw, uh, excuse me, main phase one pot of greed. Gross. Wish I had the IO for that. I know you do. I'll take two more cards off the top of my deck. I will activate Swords of Revealing Light, and then I will Give choose to set a monster. I'll just pass it to you. Okay, I'll go ahead and draw. Main one. Well, this kind of sucks. Berserk Gorilla can't attack. Uh, you probably set something to kill the gorilla. I think I saw Night Assailant game one when I, like, torrentialed you for four. Could also be Merchant as well, I guess. Yeah, let's just Rota. That's fine. I will grab the good old Force of the Exiled. Run him out, sack yep. him off. Yep, that's okay. It is a Merchant. Merchant. All right, I'm sitting pretty. Go ahead, turn right, one on I'm swords. I'm sitting better, man. I will put the one on swords. I'll go stand by me. Uh, I will set another card, and I will set a face down. And it is your move. Okay, we are entering turn two on swords. I've got a back row and a throw back to you. All right, simple enough. I'll draw, stand by me. Sure. Um, I'll flip up the magical merchant and I'll Second use it. Second merchant. That's fine. Yeah, go for it. Prohibition. I'll take it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Okay. Um, I will tribute the magical merchant for vampire lord. Ooh, sure. Cool. Don't want to really just crash into your gorilla, but I'm okay with just keeping the Lord around. I got another turn on swords, so I will just uh, pass it over to you, bud. Go ahead. I'd like to crash with Vampire Lord. That would be ideal. I'll draw in one. Well, uh, swords expires this turn, so I guess I'll set a additional face down. Over to you. All right. Swords is gone. I'll take my draw. Stand my phase, main phase. All right. Let's do some cleanup. I will uh, summon Exiled Force. Force is... Fine. Big force guy, gonna get over the Berserk Gorilla. I'll my body this. Okay, no problem. Um, looks like we gotta lose this Berserk Gorilla. That's okay. Uh, I mean, excuse me, the, the Vampire Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right, if you say so. Yeah, I'll just have my turn, go ahead. Interesting. I'm gonna dust on end phase here. Okay. It was a, another copy of Prohibition. Now I know you have another one in your hand, thank you. Main one, let's just take out your Vampire Lord. I'll activate Mage Power and uh, we're gonna get swole. Yeah, he's big as fuck. Okay, that's fine. He is 4,000 after I set an additional face <laughs> Okay, all right, I'll take 2,000, and then Vampire Lord only activates on card effects, so I won't be able to Correct. do that. Uh, <laughs> big motherfucker out here, Cage, go right? ahead. I'll draw, I'll go stand by phase, main phase. I will sure. just set a card, and uh, I'll pass it to you, bud, go ahead. Okay, uh, I'll draw. Main one, I'm going to Call of the Haunted Exiled Force. Oh my god, <laughs> okay, yeah, that's fine. Sack to pop your Yeah, sack. it's tomato. Oh, Jesus, relax. Okay. okay. Um, call stays because the monster was tributed, which is fantastic. I'm going to set another back row and we're going to hit you for 4,500. <laughs> yeah, bro. That's a big gorilla. Okay. <laughs> A draw, stand by main. The one gorilla to rule the progression <laughs> series. This is amazing. <laughs> um, I'll just set and I'll pass. Go ahead. Oh God, please tell me I could clean this up. Draw, uh, maybe summon Sasuke. Yep. Hit with gorilla. <laughs> okay, it is a uh, night assailant. So the night assailant's gonna have to give me a turn here. <laughs> you have to kill the Sasuke. <laughs> All right, we're sticking around, All buddy. Right. Go ahead. I'll draw. <laughs> Standby phase, main phase. Um, sure. 
<laughs> I'll set one, two, go. Your turn. This is amazing. This I'm is holding on for dear life right now. <laughs> Sand gas. Oh my god. Yep, okay. 45. Let's yep. go. Big gorilla. It's sacred crate hit for a thousand. Yeah, go I'm gonna take the a thousand. <laughs> oh my god, he's under the CED threshold. Go. <laughs> I'll draw. <laughs> No! Oh my god! Oh, that could have been huge! Uh, Did you just draw a CED? No. I, I drew something that I can't even use. Um... <laughs> What is this game? Oh, dude. Oh, my God. I think I just lost. Oh, just scoop him up to the Berserk Gorilla, buddy. Ook, ook, ok, ok, let's go. <laughs> dude, what a bunch of shit, man. That's unbelievable. I'll go Kaiku. Uh, yeah, Bottomless. sure. Oh, not even. Okay, I'll go Battle Phase. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll threatening Roar. I don't Yeah, yeah, fun. sure. Yeah, I'm sure you do. Damn, oh, my God. I should. Hit oh, the concede button. Hit God. the concede button. Ah, oh, let's go, the Berserk Gorilla. Gorilla. <laughs> Dude, I, you know what I should have did? I should have made the most heads up play ever and pro him my body so I could stick that exiled force. That would have been crazy. That would have been insane, especially considering you had two copies. Okay, so what was your theory bringing in pro him? So my theory with pro him is it was like going to be another way. The one card that I've been absolutely terrified of when I'm trying to stick CED and is why I held it the entire game last time is bottomless trap. So I okay, try to either sure. draw myself into a my body or something that can play through it. So I right, mean, if I'm able right. to exile one, one of those options by just prohibiting it. And it, I mean, it like, it makes it a little easier to get through. I probably could have used it a little bit more strategically this time around too, by maybe like calling something like my body, which I thought you might have to protect from the exiled force. I didn't realize how consequential it was. I also think I should have attacked with that fucking vampire ward. I left it up because I was like, ah, oh, he doesn't have anything. And I totally forgot. You definitely showed me mage power in the first time around. So, I mean, in all fairness, I did have threatening roar if you did try to do that anyway. Okay. So, and I even had a second threatening roar. So like, okay. I don't know how much of a difference it would have made if I'm being completely honest, but it could have, right? It just sucks too because you don't want to lose your vampire lord to like battle, yeah. right? And you didn't know I kept it, like you can tell I sided out of the Ben K stuff. Yeah. And that was oh, yeah. my plan. That was my plan all along. My plan was try to get like a cheesy game one win with Ben K. And then when that fails, which oh it failed, uh <laughs> just side back into thankfully there's 15 cards to take out, and then I could put in my old deck basically. I had to keep stuff in like Mage Power and United We Stand, but since I play beat down anyway i can actually afford to play these cards and it's not even that bad and it's even funnier because that's one of the reasons i actually ended up winning the game but yeah no i i see your logic with this card with a uh, prohib it's something that it's really hard right like you didn't know berserk gorilla was gonna spiral into this monstrosity oh, 4500 right? dude he's fucking gargantuan he's so mad <laughs> right and like you didn't know three turns ago when i first i literally my first turn of the game was normal summon berserk gorilla i don't think you would have expected berserk gorilla to be on the board seven turns later Later, but no. also be the reason you lost the game on top of it. Yeah, damn, dude. I really should have addressed it earlier. The swords, I kept them at bay, but it yeah. wasn't enough. Yeah. All right. So DR1, how are your pulls? What'd you get? Bro, it was awful. Honestly, <laughs> like... If I could tell you anything relevant I I got, I would. You didn't I, like anything I, relevant? No, I think like the big thing was like like we said, like rounding out play sets and stuff like that. Like okay. I ended up okay. getting my third Sakuratsu armor and the third Rageki break. But sure. dude, okay. other than that, I didn't get anything from this set, Okay. Man. Nothing at all. Now you had a wow. reroll at your fingertips too. Did you end up using it? I didn't. I decided I'd bank it because I feel like looking at the set, the major things that you could get were Breaker, which is an ultra. So mm -hmm. like good fucking luck, right? One thing I'm really pissed that I missed out on it's a rare but with these side sets being so massive it's actually pretty easy to miss rares as we saw in uh dark beginning one we had the same problem i actually miss tribe infecting virus as well me too me and, too right exactly and it's like i am i gonna waste a redoer ticket for tribe like tribe's good i don't know if it's like that good i mean it's like a fine card right and but there's other ways to get tribe too like for instance i get to spin the wheel next episode so i will have a chance to get it that way yeah. but same thing with you rounding out play sets i got a third skill drain which is nice, That's nice. So if i want to play like skill drain beat down. I actually have the full play set of that now. I got two Sakuretsu, so now I also have a full play set of Saku. Uh, so that felt really good. I think I may have rounded out Regeki Breaks. I got a second Spirit Reaper act. Oh, that's pretty uh, I didn't. Too. I didn't play the second one, but I have it in case I decide to uh, in the future. And I know Spirit Reaper gets limited eventually on some ban lists later on, but uh, I mean, for it, I mean, it's not limited now, is it? I don't think so. No, I don't oh, think okay. right now. Well, in any case, I have a second one in case it ever comes up. The, the uh, one know, thing if, we were talking about rounding out play sets and the one play 
playset that I wanted to round out that I, I, I didn't end up getting any of, actually, is Gravekeeper Spy. <laughs> you didn't get a single spy. No, I was so worried about getting wow. some spies because I was like, I had one spy in my original pulls and I was like, oh, I'll get uh -huh. two more and I'll buff it out because I got two Necro Valleys as well. I was like, yo, that could be pretty hot if I want to build some Gravekeepers later on. You know, sure. Recruiter and Descendant, they're pretty good cards. I didn't right. get any. No more Gravekeeper Spy. That's I was shocking. stunned, dude. It was unbelievable. If it makes you feel any better, I would have to go back and check, but I'm almost certain I also did not get any spies. I I got an additional guard. I think I only pulled one guard out of Pharaonic Guardian, so I have an extra one of those now. But uh, nothing else. Yeah, it's weird how it's just like commons and rares, really. And even the rares, we didn't even get that many good rares on top of it, because there was just so many potential cards. Like, I got bullshit like Question and like all the other like bad oh, yeah. supers and ultras. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you did as well. Of course, but, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, I guess that's how the way the progression series is. It's funny, like we were thinking the reprint sets were going to be like, holy shit, this is changing everything. And like, it sort of did, but not really, you know? <laughs> I really wish I didn't mulligan my first Dark Beginning pulls. I remember telling you how good it was, and I still look yeah. at it back to this day, dude, those pulls were nuts, and I should not have gotten rid of my Snatch Steel, as well yep. as the, uh, what was the other one, Magician of Faith? The first yep. Magician of Faith in the Progression series, and I mulliganed it away, bro. Can I say, Gage, it felt so good knowing that you could not change of heart my position. Oh, <laughs> I bet it felt really nice, dude. Yeah, I took a Tribute Monster out of my deck, because that's like one less time I'll be able to sack over right. your dude for it. Right. I, you know, it's funny though, looking back, I was kind of giving the reprint sets some shit, but actually looking at my board right here, Mage Power and Call of the Haunted were both from my re-roll of Dark Beginning. Yeah, yeah, so there you go. had I not gotten that reprint set, then, you know, this wouldn't have actually happened in this exact scenario. So it's kind of funny. Uh, we also got to see Threatening Roar uh, a bit this episode. And uh, my theory with this card is I didn't really get to talk about it much last episode because uh, there just really wasn't an opportunity to. But my theory is with you playing like Yada Lock bullshit that not not only if you CED me, it prevents me from getting clocked by Emperor for like 3k, but if you go CED and I chain Threatening Roar, it prevents you from Yada locking me. Yep. So at least it buys me a turn. It may not matter, but at least one turn is better than zero. And in certain instances, just stopping you from attacking, as we've seen in season one of the progression series is very powerful, but I don't think we really gave this card enough credit in the, well, I didn't give it any credit because I didn't pull any, but I'm curious to see how this card plays out in the early stages. It is a minus one, but there are times where we think we're going to connect with our dudes and like one stop of the battle phase could turn everything around so the very Just important part about it too is uh chainable it being chainable is yes. a very very big deal yes so. absolutely good games buddy this was a weird episode <laughs> this was man it was actually pretty intense for the duels i will say i'm, I'm surprised yeah. i lost this one i thought going back for sure on this would have been unstoppable but now man now you should be quaking in your boots because i have a ban at the ready so it could be uh, anything you have a ban at the ready but uh i didn't really talk about this all that much at the beginning of the episode i have a snatch steel to redeem from the wheel. So <laughs> no way! This you get is... The, you get the Starlight <laughs> Rare, and then you get to take something from my collection? What, what can I say? You've already won, like, way more than yeah, I have, so I don't want to hear it, but it's my fair. turn to turn the all tables right, on you. So, right. the first ever Snatch Deal in the Progression Series Season 2. How you and I decided to do this, because we talked about this, like, many different times, and never really decided on a clear way to make this work, and then I think now that we've sort of seen how Progression Series 2 has played out, we sort of came to a consensus census on how this should work. So what's going to happen is at the beginning of next episode, because of course we have to keep you guys in suspense, I get to pick any card out of Gage's collection and not take the card from Gage's collection, but take a copy of that card. So this way, it doesn't feel so bad for Gage that he loses out on something powerful, but it just gives me access to something as equally as powerful. So it's sort of like a Starlight Rare wild card in a way, but it's a bit more limiting because you don't just get to pick from everything. So uh, I wonder what I'm going to pick next time. I was kind of few because I picked the band Change of Heart and then saw the Snatch Steel and I'm like, yeah. damn, I could have just stolen Snatch Steel from you. Well, that would funny. Yeah, now but. you know how I feel about the Link one duo, right? It's only, <laughs> it's only fair. Hey, I got Duo 2 in that opening, so it counts for both of them. I guess I already had one, so not really, but lots of fun stuff next episode. You get a band ticket, I get to snatch something from you, and uh, this is actually the end of the DM era, Gage. I think next episode, unless I'm mistaken, is the Lost Millennium. It's the beginning of GX, and I can't believe we're already here. It feels like we just started either. Season two. Honestly, it's been this, this whole first chunk of season two, though. Like we were talking about, man, whole different playing field. Feels like an entirely new game. I can't wait to see how it's going to play out. No, I can't wait either.
So guys, that's going to wrap it up for another episode. I hope you enjoyed. As always, let's shout the patrons for all of their continued support. So shout to Shout1317, Moto Cameron Smith, Tim Zuzer, X3, SJ Winchester, Chaotic Meeple, MBT Play Medolce, Part 2, Pony Stark, Dan Medhoven, Synchro Guy, Ole, Yusuf Asin 05, I Ship MBT and Simo, Draconic Rockside, Jordan Coons, Iron Blazem, Jesse Wood, Chris Hood, David Liu, Skyros, Dylan Hunter, Cody Brett, John Tubase, Extremely Vulgar Man, Brody Eastwood, Day Sir, Carlos CT, Flannel Daddy, Phoenix the Immortal, Einstein's Theory of MBT's Relative Toes, Hornet, Give Me Speedroid or Give Me Death, Jonah Messenger, TC gaming thanks for the sleeves dad matthew brady max mbt's ghost trick bmw tom russell why read cards when you can just click buttons helios 515 black acre thank you simo mbt gauge the rjb0 and ruxton 34 the entire state of indiana valen jackson justice for queen tira masu imagine committing a crime and finding out your lawyer is a yugi tubing rothschild mbt fans scare me more than covid simping for simo tyler h nicholas carpenter simo's harem of sexy yugi tubers nim noodle malaprinch of the burning tunnels mbt canceled by all community soon mike ty stella and zoe vermilion wonder waffle skull servant and the wandering doomed are boyfriends just an awesome name not reading cards makes the game interesting and you know it and the undertaker versus simo and mbt thank you guys so much for watching the video and we will see you next time